Number 40. Predict the valence electron molecular orbital configurations for the following and state whether they will be stable or unstable ions. And then we have P2, 2 plus. Okay, so before we look at the mess down at the bottom, the first thing we have to figure out is how many total valence electrons are there in P2, 2 plus? Well, we need our handy dandy periodic table. Now, on the periodic table, where is phosphorus, right? Phosphorus is P. And phosphorus is in group either 5A or 15. Depending on what periodic table you have, they might go by group 5, group 5A, or 15. But lucky number 5s all around, the 5 represents the number of valence electrons. So phosphorus has 5 valence electrons. But there are 2 of them. So I have double the amount of valence electrons. So if I have 2 phosphorus, I'm just going to multiply by the five valence electrons. And I'll just put val electron. So two times five is a total of now 10 valence electrons for the two phosphorus. But it can't be that simple, right? They got to throw in a charge. And in this case, it's a plus two. Remember, in chemistry, plus actually means that you lose electrons. So in this case, you lost two electrons. So I'm going to take my 10 and deduct... Uh, two electrons from it. So 10 minus 2 is now a total of 8 valence electrons, which we will be using in a little bit. So that's the first part. Now the second part is now addressing the mess, which is this gook down here. Now just know that these are your general it's a template for molecular orbital configurations. There's two different types, and the reasons between the two different types is a concept called SP mixing. So you're mixing like your S and P orbitals. But that concept is a little bit further along than a general chemistry course. You will talk about this concept if you're actually in a chemistry major in college and um, you're in like a physical chemistry class. But for now, just know that there are two general uh, valence electron molecular orbital configurations. And the two differ by what group you're in. Now, in this case, we said that we were in group 5A. So, in this case, we're going to be using the top molecular orbital configuration. So, for us, we're just going to take this and plop it up here. The rest of it can basically get thrown away, but I just wanted to show you up here just to show you that there are two different ones. So just pause the video if you need to, if you want to write down the other one, but it's going bye-bye. And now I just have P2 with a 2 plus. So I have my general configuration. Now I just have to make it phosphorus's own. Now the first thing is, is I do have little markers here, blue and yellow uh, highlighters that need a number, right? Depending on what element you're talking about. And this number comes from the period, right? Because your S's and your P's all come, your, come from your principal quantum number. So for phosphorus, we did say that it was in group 5A, but if we look on a periodic table, it's in period 3. And 3 is the lucky number here. So for all of them, we're going to be talking about the 3S. The 3S and then all your P's. Remember, you got three different... Uh, P orbitals, X, Y, and Z. So I'm just going to go right across and just say 3, 3, and 3. Now just know that these are talking about your sigma and your pi bonds. This notation is talking about a sigma bond versus these are your pi's, right? And just know that for every bonding opportunity, there has to be a antibonding opportunity. And as we're going from left to right, energy is increasing. So just notice that your antibonding is always higher in energy than its bonding equivalent, right? These go together, one's bonding, one's antibonding. This and this go together, one's bonding, one's antibonding. And then this and this go together, one's bonding, one's antibonding. Now the last thing we have to do is since um, 
the energy is increasing from left to right, you got to throw your electrons in the lowest energy molecular orbital first, and then you keep going and going and going until you reach the total number of valence electrons. So all your valence electrons are going to be placed after the molecular orbital or the group of molecular orbitals. And remember, for each molecular orbital, you're only allowed a max of two electrons. So let's go for it. I'm going to fill up this one because I need eight, right? So I know that two electrons are going to be dropped here. Now I move on to the next antibonding sigma 3s orbital. I'm going to drop my two electrons here. Now I have a total of four. I got to keep going because I have to get to eight. So I'm going to fill up the next one. Well, let's see. Am I going to fill it up or let's see what's going on? Well, now here, since I have two orbitals, technically I could have a max of two electrons in this one, and I could have a max of two electrons in this one. So two plus two is a total of four max electrons that can go in that upper one. And if I already have four, I can add the max of four. And I'm at my max, right? If I just, you know, get rid of this, and I count, I have two, four, eight electrons, and I'm only allowed eight. So I don't even have to continue on. And just know that proper notation is where you cut off your molecular orbital configuration after the last number. So all of this technically can go bye-bye. And this is your P2 2 plus valence electron molecular configuration. But now there's a second part to the question, whether this ion is going to be stable or unstable. And when you're talking about stability of an ion, specifically if they're asking you for molecular orbital configurations, this is all coming down to the bond order. Bond order is going to tell you specifically what type of bond is going to be made between the two phosphorus. Is it going to be a single bond? Is it going to be a double bond? Is it going to be a triple bond? Let's find out. It comes from a formula, and that formula is this. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller, but bond order is just a pretty simple formula. It's the total number of bonding electrons minus the total number of antibonding divided by two. So we just have to pick out, out of these three types of electrons, who's bonding and who's antibonding. Well, it's easier to just pick out your antibonding first, because antibonding is always the one that's linked up with a star. So these do not have stars next to them. This is the only one that has a star, and there's two electrons there. So you have two antibonding electrons. And now for bonding, it's everything else. It's the one that doesn't have the star. So these are bonding. That's two electrons. And these are bonding. That's four electrons. Two plus four is a max of six. So if I just write this formula out now with the numbers, bond order equals something minus something else divided by two. Bonding is six minus two all divided by two. We do the subtraction first. So six minus two is four. Four divided by two will get me two. So we have a bond order of two. Now what this means, you could think of this as the number of lines in your bond. Two lines represents a double bond. So this is actually calling for a specific bond between the two phosphorus. And if you can form a bond, would that be a stable or an unstable ion? Yeah, you got it. It would definitely be stable. The idea here is that you do not want to see a bond order of zero. If your answer was zero, that literally means no bond can be formed. Zero, none. So if no bond is formed, chances are it's a very unstable ion. And that's the answer. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for viewing the video. Um, love talking to you guys in the comments. So just tell me what's up. And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much for coming to the channel and we love helping you guys out. We've been receiving so many kind comments in the ch 
you know, kind comments in the, the comment section, I guess. Um, so we'll just keep doing what we're doing. You guys keep studying hard and yeah, thank you so much. I'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.